One of the common, common threads that you're going to hear over and over and over again is that there have been pivots along the way. Well, hey, 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 what's up, everyone? Welcome to the Rock Your Brand Podcast. I'm your host, Scott Boker, a serial entrepreneur on a mission to help you. This show is designed to teach you, to inspire you, to motivate you, to take massive action and build a future-proof business. So whether you're just starting out or taking your existing business to the next level, this is your home. Now, if you're ready, I'm ready. Let's rock your brand. What's up, guys? Welcome back to another episode of the Rock Your Brand podcast. This is episode 873. And today, what I'm doing here is, well, we typically have an interview in this Wednesday slot. And depending on when you're listening to this, this is airing on a Wednesday. And all of our Wednesday episodes are usually with a guest. And what I wanted to do today is I wanted to call a little timeout and I wanted to reflect on 14 of our past guests. I also wanted to kind of give you an area where you could go through, pick which ones you want to listen to, and you'll have them in a nice, easy to find location. So by me doing this episode, there will be show notes, which will also have all of these episodes and the links to them inside of this post. So that's another reason why I decided to do this. All right. Now you can find all of these episodes that I'm about to touch on here over at brandcreators.com forward slash 873. Again, that's brandcreators.com forward slash 873. And before I start going through this here, I did want to just let you guys know, like when I decided to do this as far as switch up the brand and any of you that have been listening for, well, over the past year, you might realize that while this podcast was once called The Amazing Seller, and I haven't said that in a long time, over uh, what, four or five months now, and uh, while it feels really good because now we are the Rock Your Brand podcast, but that happened, uh, let's see here, it happened, I'm looking at my notes here, May 13th was when I announced that. So it was four months ago that I announced that here on the podcast. And that was episode 828. So again, I want you guys to take this episode. Also, this little part here that I'm sharing with you is that, you know, I decided to do something after I was already up and running and doing this podcast for over four and a half years. And I decided it was time to pivot. And you're going to hear with all of these guests that I had on, one of the common, common threads that you're going to hear over and over and over again is that there have been pivots along the way. There's going to be because you, as you learn, you grow. As you grow, you want to try new things or maybe your interests change, whatever, or circumstances change. Right now, the time that I'm recording this, we're in a pandemic. We're in the COVID-19 thing, which is crazy, right? It's changed everything. And there's a lot of businesses that have had to change the way that they operate, the way that they do business, all right? So understand that me sharing this with you is also just another way for you to see the evolution of a business, an evolution of a person, and that's including myself and possibly you. And if you haven't evolved yet, you will, trust me, as you go through this journey, you will evolve, all right? So that's why I wanted to kind of call a little time out here on the interviews, We've already done 14 amazing interviews, and I've got a bunch more to come, all right? And the other thing I want to highlight here before I start going through these episodes, and I'm just going to highlight each one of these, and then really what I want you to do is go find the one that speaks to you right now. Now, I would personally create like a little playlist here. I would make this something that you listen to maybe over the next two weeks and just listen to all of these episodes, and you're going to hear a common thread, but you're also going to see that a lot of these people are not far off from you. They're probably where you were or are, and you're going to see how they were able to turn things around. And it wasn't always easy. All right. So I do want you to really, really like listen to these and think about them as yes, inspiration and motivation, but also what can you pull from that? There's going to be some nuggets 
in here. And some of these interviews, we got a little tactical and we started talking strategies. And I try not to do that because I always want to dig into their story. And I really want to hear about their take action moments. That's really what I'm doing here as well. And for those of you that don't know, I did write a book called The Take Action Effect. And if you're watching this, you see me hold it up right now. But uh, this in this book, it was all about my moments that I've, I've changed. And in those change comes fear and, you know, comes all of these things that we don't want to do because it's uncomfortable, but also has what led me to where I am today. I mean, even me sharing with my audience, you guys, the, the time that I started to think I want to change the name. I don't want to keep the name, the amazing seller. I want to make it the rock your brand podcast. I want to be helping brand creators. That was a scary time for me in a sense, right? So I got through it, but I also shared it with you to let you know that the people that you look at that are successful, if they're not sharing the things that they struggled with, you know, that's to me, it's not being transparent because we can't look at the highlight reel always, right? The highlight reel just shows all the good things. What about all the bad things? What about all the days that didn't go well, right? And that's really what I want you to take away because if you're feeling that, if you're feeling like things aren't going 100% your way, it's normal and it's normal to doubt yourself. It's also normal to go back to what's easy, right? So again, I just wanted to share this and this little intro here to let you know that, uh, you know, you're not alone in feeling that, all right? The other thing I want to say here before we jump into this little uh, playlist that I'm going to kind of run through here with all of these amazing guests, if you missed any of these, uh, but also that's why I run an event called Brand Accelerator Live. It's a way for me to share what's working right now, but also I get to invite guests on. Now, if uh, you are listening to this before September 12th, I'm going to throw a little shameless plug in here. Uh, we are having Brand Accelerator live. This year, it's virtual, so we're not doing a live event, obviously, because of COVID. And uh, if you want to attend that, where you're going to be able to hang out with myself, Chris Schaefer, and a few amazing uh, guests that I have lined up, all you need to do is head over to BALtickets.com. Again, that's BALtickets.com. But this show here is not about promoting that event. It's just something that I wanted to mention just in case you missed that because it is an amazing event, but it's also a workshop where we can help you get through all of the obstacles out there and really just give you a clear path. That's really what we're trying to do here inside of our Brand Accelerator Live event, our virtual event, and also in any of the trainings that we ever do. It's really about what can we do to simplify things, but also create a less friction path so you can go down and actually get results. All right, so let's dig in here, guys. Like I said, all of these episodes are gonna be linked up on the show notes, brandcreators.com forward slash 873. And I titled this 14 people that failed but succeeded. And it's true. All of them will say I failed at something. But a lot of them don't look at it as failure. They look at it as a learning experience. They might have learned that later, as I have. But it's really important to highlight that. And then I also titled it your motivation and success playlist because it will give you motivation. If you're feeling down, pull one of these up, listen to it. You're going to be like, oh my gosh, they were worse off than me, right? So I want you take that page on that, on that uh, website, brandcreators.com forward slash 873, bookmark it, save it, go back to that, okay? Make that a go-to motivation, inspiration type playlist, all right, so let's let's dig in. My, my first guest that I reached out to, which is a funny story on how I was able to get in contact with him, Colin Costella, and uh, he was actually introduced to me by my son, who's 22 years old, going to be 23, and uh, he introduced me to him because he's into basketball. My son's into basketball as well, and he watched a lot of his training videos, and my son was like, you should probably reach out to him, and I said, well, why don't you reach out to him? DM him on Instagram and uh, see if he'd be willing to come on the show, and he did. He agreed. And man, oh man, let me tell you something. He is so uh, so aligned with my values, but also so aligned with uh, just the way that I believe business should be done. He started as a school teacher, a former school teacher, kind of what my son's doing. He's going to college to be a school teacher, but also he wants to train people online and that's what he's done. He built a massive YouTube channel. He talks about on that episode also some of the hurdles there and how he, he failed miserably at his first product. No one bought it. Thought he was done, um, but then he moved on and now he's built a very, very successful business off 
of the YouTube traffic, but also talks about how important an email list is and all that stuff. And now how he's launching a TV uh, network for uh, athletes. So it's pretty crazy, but it's a great story. That was episode 831. That was my first uh, interview after I announced the Rocky Brand podcast. So that was Colin. Then I interviewed Matt Giovansky, who was 834. And he got fired from his uh, pool company that he was working for, a pool company that he was working for out of high school. He was working there. He was like the lab tech, got fired because he was doing a, a blog on the side. And all he was doing was trying to answer people's questions on a blog and thought maybe, I don't know, something will come from it. He wasn't competing locally, but he has since built that over the past 15 years, by the way, but he's built other businesses as well. But he took that blog and made that the top swimming pool and spa educational, it's called Swim University. Now he's built that business and uh, it's amazing because he gets a lot of traffic. I think he gets over 7 million visits a year um, and he was doing really, really good lately uh, with uh, Amazon Associates, doing really good, over six figures a year in income, but something happened. Amazon came out with a, a little change in their affiliate program and they reduced their commissions, cut his business almost in half. He talks all about that and how he's going to get through that, but also he's got other revenue streams, but just a great interview because someone that's just a go-getter, someone that you'll learn from. So definitely check out that one. That's 834. The next one, this was a highlight for me. His name is John Gordon. He wrote a bunch of books. I read The Energy Bus, which was introduced to me by my wife, and she said, you got to read this. It's a great book. It's a great quick read, and I'm not, I don't want to read a long book. I'm not a long book uh, reader, and it was just amazing on the lessons of us just slowing down, but also appreciating the people in our lives and, uh, and not taking them for granted. So it was a great book. And then that turned me on to his other book, The Carpenter, which is another great book, great principles inside of that book. But he's, wrote, he's written many other books. Um, but my wife was able to get him on the podcast. My wife does a lot of my outreach. And man, that was, that was awesome. And he talks about how he was rejected multiple times, I think over 30 times. And he finally got someone to say yes to signing his first book, which was The Energy Bus, and has sold now over 2 million copies worldwide. And he helps like sports teams, like high level successful people, but it all came from him continuing to push and push and believing in what he wanted to do out there and reach out there. So another great interview. The next interview was Amber Mazzola, who is the, the executive director of the profit, the TV show, the profit, the show that I watch every single time that a new episode comes out, I'm watching that episode. And I was able to get her on, or actually my wife was able to get her on, and she was amazing, but also talks about how she almost said no to a small little project, which led to her being able to do big TV shows, right? She almost said no. Uh, so she's got a great story on what she shares there. She also shares the story on how she was able to get um, Alex Rodriguez to do his show back in the game. Uh, so it's just a crazy story, uh, but a really great guest and someone that was willing to share some of her failures um, and how she was able to turn that around. And also how she, you know, no, how, how she looks at things now, even that it's not always easy. Like it's not easy to put on a big TV show. So that was just a great, great interview. The next one was episode 843. That was Jasmine Starr. Now, Jasmine, my wife and I have been following her for years, more my wife than I because uh, we were in the photography space. Some of you that have been following for a while, you know that we were in the photography space. Well, my wife was following her because she was a photographer, but also someone that was sharing her, uh, you know, her photography style tips and, you know, just different things in photography. And then here we are almost 12 or 13 years later, and uh, we had her on the show. And she's not teaching photography anymore. She's teaching marketing and social media and things like that. And so uh, I was able to get her on and it was amazing. My, my wife was in awe when, when I was able to get her on. And then actually after my interview, she stayed on for a little while and talked to my wife. So it was pretty cool. Um, but again, her story is amazing because uh, she was going to college to be a lawyer and then dropped out and then uh, didn't know what she was going to do. And she's like, I think I want to be a photographer. Didn't know anything about photography, kind of like our story was, and then ended up believing in herself and doing it wasn't easy and then became one of the top wedding photographers in the industry. Uh, and then how she pivoted out of that business into marketing and social media and stuff. So great interviews, 
right? But it shows how, and she actually talks about one uh, thing that had happened probably two, three years ago and how they, they burnt through a lot of money and learned a valuable lesson, um, but in her eyes failed and uh, learned a ton from that. And she shared that on that interview. So that's 843. And again, guys, I'm gonna link all of these up inside of this one uh, post in, um, you know, at brandcreators.com forward slash 873. The show notes will have all of these links and all of the episodes and the titles and all of these guests. So that's that one. Moving on, 846, Dean Graciosi, who's also buddies with Tony Robbins. Holy crap, that was amazing. Uh, actually, it's funny because uh, someone from Dean's team reached out to me to come on my show, which was, I was like, okay, yeah, let's get him on. And so uh, that's how that worked. My wife didn't even have to outreach. And we had a great conversation. We really hit it off. Um, and his story he shared, because I read his book, um, the, uh, the under, uh, I think it's the underdog advantage. I'm looking over there cause I have it on my desk. Um, and it talks about a story in there about, uh, Motley Crue and, uh, and, uh, how he was able to get Tommy Lee, um, and almost did a deal with him in the beginning, but then that fell through and just a crazy, crazy story. Um, but also how he almost gave up, almost never went on to do his next thing. He was just going to kind of stay in his own little world of blue collar. And he was going to just, you know, be an, uh, basically, a auto body, uh, mechanic or a, you know, doing body shop work. Cause that's what he was. That's what he was used to great story. And again, definitely recommend you listen to that episode, but that was a highlight for me as well. And the cool thing is, is now that connection has been made. Uh, Dean is actually going to come back on the show at a later date. You know, he actually said that on the interview, he wants to come back. Uh, we really, we really hit it off. Um, the next one, 849 was Todd Herman. Now I met Todd Herman in Puerto Rico when I was at Puerto Rico masterminds and Todd was one of the speakers there and it's a really small event though. It was only like 30 people. And then, um, we got to hang out and we were climbing palm trees, um, which was, uh, or not palm trees, uh, coconut trees. And, um, it was awesome. It was awesome. But anyway, he wrote a book called the, uh, the alter ego effect. And, uh, I, Ended up getting him on the podcast. Obviously, after we were there, uh, we reached out to him and he said, yeah, I'd love to come on. But what a great story. And he talks about how to unlock your secret identity so you can become more of who you really are. Um, but he, he coaches like athletes, like top athletes, like Olympians, like crazy, crazy uh, people that he that he coaches. And, and But the thing is, it wasn't always like that. And he talks through some of those things. He even had covid he talks about that. So just a great guy, truly just a great guy, but he's a no BS, like let's just stop making excuses and let's get your life to where you want to go. But he talks also about the struggles that he's also went through. Um, so that was a great interview. Um, 852, Abel James. Man, I seen his podcast years ago uh, called The Fat Burning Man and my wife reached out to him got him on the show. We hit it off. I didn't know he was a listener of my podcast. Didn't even know that. And I'm actually scheduling another interview to have him come back on. So we don't just talk about his story. We're going to talk about the actual health part of being an entrepreneur and really how to become healthier so you can focus better. And so we can just live a happier, healthier life. And uh, I'm going to get him back on to discuss that. But his interview was awesome because he had health problems and that's what led him to his business. Again, a lot of times what, where we are right now is what is going to take us to where we need to go or where we want to go. And Abel James is a perfect example of that. And not to mention, he's a musician. Guy can sing. The guy can play guitar. He can play piano. Guy's amazing. Um, so just a great, great guy. And uh, he talks all about his struggles and how things changed and things were going really well. And then all of a sudden he got a Google slap and he lost all of his traffic or a lot of it. And his sales tanked talks all about those things, right? And how he had to pivot. Uh, just, just a great interview. Uh, the next one was 855 with Jordan Harbinger. Jordan Harbinger from used to be The Art of Charm, which is a podcast that has gotten millions, millions of listeners. Well, he talks about how he basically got kicked out of his own business from his business partners and uh, how he had to start over from scratch and how he did. And now he's got a thriving new podcast, but it wasn't easy. He was doubting himself. He was kicking himself. He was thinking the world was going to end because now he couldn't do anything out there. They were going to tarnish his name and sponsors wouldn't want to come on his show. He talks all about that. 
and he gets a little he gets a little feisty with uh, you know what he had to go through and what he still goes through, um, you know, with those partners and so how it's still not done and not over, but how he deals with that on a regular basis. So that's a great interview with Jordan. Um, Eight fifty eight, another highlight for me, Dave Turin. From Gold Rush, the TV show, Gold Rush. You heard me right. I love that show. Uh, I've been watching that show since the beginning. And Dave Turin was introduced probably about midway through Gold Rush. And now he has his own show uh, show on there as far as, uh, you know, them taking him and building a show around Dave Turin because everyone loved Dave Turin. Well, I got to sit down with him. He was in his in his uh, library, in his office area, and I was in mine, and we were just jamming. We were talking as though we were just a couple of buddies hanging out, talking about life, talking about how he went from running his father and his family businesses, uh, or his fa- his family business uh, is in a rock quarry where they basically manufacture ma- manufacture rock, and so he went through that entire thing, and uh, and how he actually got involved in gold rush and how you know how he was able to get into that show and we got we we talked a lot we we talked a lot it was just great because he also talks about life lessons he talks about how just growing up the way that he was raised a lot like I was like things don't come for free you got to work for them Um, and believe it or not the guy's an entrepreneur the guy has tried other projects after gold rush when uh, he was kind of done with that because he got out of the show because he was uh, more or less having issues with that that crew Um, and from there he tried to start something else and it failed. And he talks about that and he talks about how he was able to overcome that and say, you know what, maybe that wasn't the right thing. Maybe I need to try this thing. And so just a great interview. Love Dave. And I actually want to schedule a time where I actually meet him in person. And we talked about that is, uh, I'm thinking about doing a little road trip here eventually. And, uh, I might make it a point to kind of see where he's at and just uh, drive through there and do a, an in-person interview. I think that would be awesome. Uh, Shannon Irvin. So Shannon's a good friend of mine. I was in a mastermind with her in with, uh, Pat Flynn and, um, just a great, great person, but really knows a lot about the neuroscience on why we don't, you know, get results. Like, why are we holding ourselves back and how to unlock that? And I had her come on, but, um, she's just great because she talks about herself. Like a lot of this was done because she was working on herself right? And then wanting to figure out like, how, how does the brain work? Why are we being held back? How can we, how can we rewire this or how can we reprogram our brain? Um, so the episode that that I'm referring to is 861 and I titled it secret mind hacks to reach your full potential and success. And it's exactly what she does. She gives us some tools to do. Like you can literally listen to it and just run through those yourself. But she also talks a lot about, like I said, what has held her back and why she decided to even get into this um, in some of those struggles along the way. Um, 864 was Prerna and Mayank. And it took me a while to be even to even be able to pronounce their names correctly. Uh, and I apologized to those guys, um, but I got it. I got it. It's Prerna and Mayank. And what a great couple, a husband and wife team. And they're all about building themselves a lifestyle business. Not one that's got 100 employees. I'm talking a business that supports them. And they talk about, again, how my uncle was working for, I believe it was American Express, uh, a pretty high-level job, six-figure job, and how he got sick. He had health issues and had to basically leave his job. So they had no choice but to do what they were doing, and that was uh, they were blogging at the time and not in what they're doing right now either, by the way. Um, and so how that actually forced them kind of for kind of like a lot of right now, what's going on, like in COVID is forcing people to make changes and pivots. It's a lot like that. So their story is really, really inspiring and motivational, but it's also actionable. And that's what I really love about these interviews. We, we, we talk about their story. We dig in, we see the take action moment. And then from there, we talk about what are those lessons? How do we apply them to ourselves? How can we learn from this? Um, So that's another great interview. Uh, 867, Josh Felber. Um, Again, my wife reached out to Josh, seen that he was doing some really cool things. He actually interviews, and one of his main things is he interviews successful people, but his main core principle is really about building things around your 
your why, your, and in his case, family, right? So he's got like four pillars that he goes through. But if it doesn't match up there, you don't do it, right? And, you know, he talks a lot about like, what do the 1% of successful people do? We actually dig into that in this interview. The other thing that we dig into, which wasn't, it wasn't expected is we started talking about something recent that happened to one of his businesses, a very successful business and how Facebook decided to shut all of his ads down and he couldn't get them reactivated. So, and that was driving a good portion of the business. So basically overnight their business, you know, their, their sales were, were chopped almost in half. And so what he was able to do and what he's doing right now to, to, you know, basically fix that. And so we talk a little bit about Facebook ads and about that situation, but also how those things can happen. And when they do, you got to be ready, but you also need to deal with them. And so we talk all about that. So that's another great interview. And my most recent interview was with Daniel Throssel. Now he was introduced by a good friend of mine, Nick Loper from the side hustle nation. And, uh, he said, you know what? Daniel's a great guy. You gotta, you gotta interview him. He's got a great story. And his story is really how he risked. Uh, after going to college to be an engineer, how he risked leaving that job to basically after he, uh, after he won a competition for something he had never done before, it was actually uh, a copywriting. And if you don't know what copywriting is, it just means that you write uh, persuasive uh, messaging in ads or in a sales page or in just an email that will get people to feel what you want them to feel and then take action. And, um, he actually wrote something as, as a uh, entry in a contest, not thinking he would win, and then ended up winning, and that changed his life forever because it made him realize that I, I kind of want to do this, but how can I do this? And then started doing some, some freelance work, and then he started finding out that you know that would dry up after a while, and then he wouldn't have any work, and then how do you, how, how, can, I, how can I create some steady revenue and, and all of that stuff? So... He went from going to college to be an engineer, doing that, getting a really good job, enjoying that job, not really totally hating it, but knowing that wasn't his life's mission. And then from there, making a leap after he had won a contest for something he had never done before and never really was trained in. He just did it from just what he thought would work. Um, So just another great story. But guys, that is... 14 interviews that I've done so far over the past four months. And I will probably do this again and kind of do a pause and then a recap. And then that way there, I can have all of these in one location. Eventually, I'll have one area on the website that will be just all past interviews. And I should probably do that sooner than later. But right now, if you want all of these episodes, you don't have to go find them all over the website or go through iTunes or uh, you know any of those platforms, which By all means, go there, and if you're there, make sure you subscribe and make sure you leave a review. Uh, But I want to make it easy for you, right? So head on over to brandcreators.com forward slash 873. All of these guests will be there. All of the links to their episodes will be there. Just bookmark that page or save that page somewhere where you have access to it and go back there. Every now and then, if you want a little bit of a pick-me-up or a motivational push, uh, any of that stuff, go there and keep these close by. Because I'm telling you right now, guys, to get out there and really understand that, yes, we are where we are right now, but where we're going, we need to go through these things in order to achieve that next thing. And I truly truly believe that, even though it's not always easy, just like this podcast, right? Started it as the Amazing Seller Podcast and then have since uh, rebranded it to the Brock Your Brand Podcast. And why did I retitle that? It made more sense for me for where I am now and where I'm going, right? And it sounds pretty cool, all right? So guys, brandcreators.com forward slash 873. Stay on the lookout for more amazing guests I've got lined up. I can't wait to share them with you guys. And if you have any guests that you would like to uh, have me potentially have on the show, just email me, scott at brandcreators.com. And who knows, maybe I'll get them on the show. All right. So that's it, guys. That's going to wrap it up. As always, remember, I'm here for you. I believe in you and I am rooting for you. But you have to, you have to. Come on, say it with me. Say it loud. Say it proud. Take action. Have an awesome, amazing day. I'll see you right back here in the next 
episode. Now let's rock your brand.